Recently, my mom and my brother reached out looking for a couple of barn doors for one of their Airbnbs. If this is your first time looking to install a sliding barn door, I have a few recommendations that's gonna make it an easy install for you or a difficult one. For this build, we're gonna use some really old barn wood. So to kick things off, we're gonna send it through the planer to clean up the faces. We decided to use this old barn wood because it's already got that distressed and classic rustic barn door look that my mom and my brother were looking for. Its durability and functionality make it a timeless design, which is why I believe it's so beloved even to this day. Moving on from the planer, we're gonna head over to the table saw where we're gonna rip down all the rails and styles for each barn door. These are gonna make the main frame for each barn door. So I didn't mention it earlier, but we're actually making two sliding barn doors, not just one. So we need to make sure that we have double the amount of material so we can make sure we complete both of these doors. So when we're cutting out the rails and styles, we need to make sure that we have six rails and four styles. So with all the rails and styles ripped down to their correct width, we're gonna move over to the chop saw so we can cut them to their correct length. So for this build, we decided to make the door 82 inches tall, which is two inches taller than the doorway opening. We made the door two inches taller so that it could cover the entire opening when sliding back and forth. So I made my doors 82 inches, but not every doorway is exactly the same. So make sure you have the correct measurements before you start building your door. The hardware that we chose to use requires that the door is two inches taller than the doorway opening, but we'll get more into that later. We're gonna head back to the table saw where we're gonna make a simple tongue and groove joint for all the rails and styles of these doors. Tongue and groove is a tried and true joint when building a door. If done correctly, this door should last for years. The styles of each door will receive a groove down the length of each board while each rail will receive a tongue and a groove. To make each groove, we're gonna do multiple passes on the table saw. This is just my preferred way of making this groove, but there are many different ways that you can make your groove. After making all the passes on the table saw, we're gonna use the chisel to get rid of the remaining material from each groove. This is gonna ensure a nice smooth bottom to all of our grooves. If the bottom of the groove is not smooth, then your tongue will not sit flush and you won't have a nice tight joint. Without a tight joint, you're gonna have a weak door and your door is not gonna last for years. Now we have our rails and styles. With all the grooves finished, we're gonna move on to cutting out all the tongues on each rail. I personally recommend you do a couple dry fits as you're cutting out the tongues. This is gonna ensure a nice tight fit and make sure the joint is the way that you want. Right, so we got to adjust the shoulder, it's too tall. From everything I've ever heard about using the tongue and groove joinery, it's supposed to create a tight seal that can reduce drafts and improve insulation, but also add to the door strength, preventing warping and ensuring longevity. Once you get close with the table saw, you can use a little bit of sandpaper to fine tune that fit. With all the rails and styles complete, we're gonna move on to cutting the interior panels of each door. For that, we're gonna use a half inch sheet of plywood. Part of the beauty of barn doors is you can pretty much use anything that you have laying around. As long as you can get the correct size out of the wood that you have, you can make this barn door work. When making the center panels for each door, make sure you make them slightly smaller than the opening. If you don't allow for expansion and contraction, then the door could buckle and come apart. But your door isn't gonna buckle and break because you're watching this video and you learned to make that panel a little bit smaller. These panels can vary in style, material, and construction technique, offering a wide range of customization options to choose from, which is really nice. Oh yeah. Whew. I thought I did something wrong. I was like, what just happened? Now we're gonna move on to do a quick little dry fit to make sure that all these pieces are gonna go together the way that I want it before we do our final assembly. Dry fitting for me is particularly useful for complex projects or when precise measurements are crucial. The benefits of doing a dry fit far outweigh the cons especially when making custom work for clients. I remind myself all the time when dry fitting, it's essential to pay attention to the fit and alignment to ensure a successful final assembly. It's also crucial to avoid applying excessive force during dry fitting, as this can damage the wood or alter the fit of the pieces, which would not be cool. With the dry fit complete, we're gonna move on to add some glue and some clamps. Something to keep in mind when selecting what kind of material you choose to make your barn doors out of is the weight. The material and thickness of the center panels will affect the overall weight of the door, which in turn impacts the hardware and support needed for the installation. Heavier doors may require sturdier tracks and rollers. Another reason plywood is a popular choice for the panels, besides being a more cost-effective option, plywood is not as heavy as other alternative options on the market. A pro tip my dad gave me when I was younger 
Make sure you have a mallet on hand so you're not using your hand as a mallet. Because I would use my hand as my own personal mallet to make sure that all of my wood joints went together. And I'm sharing this with you because as an adult, I really wish I would have listened to my dad. My hands are always sore. And it doesn't help that I still use my hands as a mallet. So as I've taught my boys, do as I say, not as I do. So tell me, what's a piece of advice that you were given by someone more experienced than you that always stuck with you, whether you follow that advice or not? For each door, we wanna use three clamps so we can have even pressure on each rail. Make sure that you're not using too much pressure when clamping because you don't wanna flex the door out of shape. Now we're gonna add a little excitement to each door by adding some wainscoting to the main panels of the doors. The Wayne's coating was a special request from my mom so that it would complement the aesthetics of the Airbnb. As I mentioned earlier, I recommend you avoid applying too much excessive force during dry fitting. The same applies for assembling the barn door when you're gluing and clamping it up. So while I was coming up with the plans to make these barn doors, I ended up doing a little research on the internet of the origins of the barn door because I never really knew the early history. Back in the day, in the ancient times, farmers built these simple structures, AKA barns to shelter their animals and store harvested crops. These early barns likely had rudimentary doorways, possibly consisting of animal hides or woven reeds to provide basic protection from the elements and predators. So not much has changed over a thousand years, but now barn doors have made their way into people's homes. If you've ever had a shop vac die in the middle of a build, leaving you stranded with all the rest of the remaining dust, give this video a like. I've had that vacuum for so long. I'm really upset with that, bro. It's so grody. So it's really no surprise that it kicked the bucket. I'm gonna cut more. The wainscoting is a great way to protect the door from damage, especially if you own an Airbnb where people will be coming and going very frequently. Now for a little added detail, we're gonna add some cross braces to the doors. So to add these braces, it was a little bit of trial and error. So basically I just kind of cut and trimmed it until I got a nice snug fit. So I've made several barn doors over the years, but I've never really quite found a good way to add these cross braces. So if you are making these barn doors, don't be discouraged if you have to trim and cut multiple times for a nice tight fit. It's just part of the building process. Whenever I picture an old school barn door in my mind, I can't seem to picture it without the cross braces. I have, however, seen a few of the designs Boom. that didn't have Very them. Tight. <laughs> so it kind of got me thinking, if I were ever to build another <laughs> sliding barn door, I think I might try something a little different. Maybe infuse some metal into the design? I don't know. I guess I'll cross that bridge when that day comes. Let me get the, the boards out of here. Now that I have everything cut and fit the way that I like it, we're gonna move on to attaching everything with some glue and nails. Adding the wainscoting to these doors isn't exactly necessary, but it does give it a little bit more of a unique modern look to it for these barn doors. So when you're making your barn door, try searching around online for inspiration so you can make your barn door unique to you. At this point in the build, everything seemed to be going according to plan. But little did I know, I was in for a couple of surprises when it came to the actual install of these doors. One of the surprises being that one of the hardware kits is designed for a much smaller door. The other surprise being that one of these doors is gonna be used for two doorways, not just one. Even with these unexpected hurdles, I was still able to accomplish this install using a few creative twists that I was able to think of on the fly. So there's our door, so I could sand it real quick. So with the barn door assembled, we're gonna move on for a quick sanding. I really don't enjoy sanding, but I don't really mind sanding barn doors because a barn door is supposed to look rustic, which means I don't have to spend as much time sanding as I do on other projects. At least that's what I tell myself. I'll admit it, I really like how these doors turned out. With the doors assembled and loaded in the truck, we hit the road on our five hour journey down to my mom and brother's Airbnb. So if you recall from the beginning of this video, this install can be very easy or it can be kind of difficult, but it's all really gonna be based off of the hardware that you choose to use. What do you think would look better? So that's where the screws gotta go. So we're just gonna get rid of that and put a new rail there. So this is a very clear example of a difficult install and a very easy install. One set of hardware for these barn doors was meant for a door of this size and one set was not. The first door we're gonna install is gonna be the difficult one with the improper hardware. I'm gonna show you how I made this improper hardware work for this situation. And afterwards, I'll show you the easy install with the proper hardware. 
So for the first part of the install, we have to add a top piece of trim that will hold the rail that, that the barn door will slide on. The trim that we're using is just a one by four painted black to match the existing trim. When adding this piece of trim, you wanna make sure it's securely fastened to the studs in the wall. This will support the entire weight of the door. When installing this piece of trim, make sure you're using a level, otherwise the door will favor one side over another. So what we have to do is make this spacer bigger by like a quarter of an inch. This first barn door install was also a little different in that they wanted to use this barn door for both the hall closet and the hallway opening. So I had to center the rail in the space, which is something that I've never really seen before. So it did pose a unique challenge for today. The step of drilling new holes into the rails is not necessary if you buy the right kit, but you should stick around and see how it turns out. With the new holes drilled, I moved on to attaching the top rail to the trim. To do this, I attached one end of the rail made sure it was level and drilled out the remaining holes before attaching the rest of the supports. This first barn door install is a total Frankenstein build in that the screws and the rails were not meant to work together. But we're gonna make it work. It's just gonna take a little finessing and a little bit of patience. Now that we've attached the top rail, we're gonna move on to attaching the rollers to the barn door. When hanging the top rail, make sure you have the correct height for the proper clearance of the door to slide. Make sure you have the instructions close by because this is gonna have all the information that you need to install your sliding barn door properly. You've probably noticed that I've been using different drill bits for attaching these parts onto the barn doors. I will have links to everything I've used in this build down in the description below, including the hardware kit I would have used for the first barn door. Just keep in mind that the hardware kit you buy should reflect the size of your door and frame. Oh. With the door sliding smoothly, I added a stopper on each side so the door wouldn't fall off the top rail. Installing the guides on the floor that keep the barn door from flopping around too much took me a couple tries to get it right. Because again, one of these doors is serving as two doors. One for separating the hallway from the living room and also being used for the linen closet. It would probably work even better if I had a few more of these guides to put down, but I was only working with the two that I had. So I needed to get a little bit creative on where to place them. So after a little bit of trial and error, I eventually got them in a spot where the door was able to stay within the guides and was able to work without popping off the wall too much. I think that's probably about as good as that's going to get. Naturally, I tested out this door a dozen times to make sure it was working properly. And this Frankenstein hardware seems to be working out just fine. So now that I showed you the difficult install, now it's time for the easy install. So cool. A lot of the same steps are going to apply for when hanging this sliding barn door, but the main difference here is that this is a proper hardware set for this size sliding barn door. So for a quick recap on how to install this door, first attach a piece of trim the full length of the top rail. This really is the main support for your barn door, and it keeps it from falling off the wall, so make sure you nail it to as many studs as you can. Second, attach the top rail with the proper supports and make sure it's level. With having the proper screws and stoppers from the hardware set, I was able to cut my time in half on this part of the install. Because rather than having to figure it out on the fly, I just read the instructions and I felt like I was on autopilot. With the top rail attached, move on to attaching the rollers to the sliding barn door. I will say that having already installed the first barn door, I kind of view that one as practice. Having said that, every install does come with its challenges. So it makes you appreciate the times when everything does go smooth. So let's hope that this door fits because it's not as light as it looks. Then you'll want to attach the door to the top rail and be sure that your stops are secure so that the door doesn't accidentally fly off the track. This barn door only requires one guide as it's only covering one door, which is exactly what it's designed for, making for an easy last step to this install. So the key takeaway from today's build I cannot stress enough to get the correct hardware for your size barn door. It's not only gonna save you time, but it's gonna save you a whole lot of headache in the end. So make sure you take a little bit of extra time and do your research to get the proper hardware and just follow the instructions because it's actually pretty easy to install a sliding barn door. And you know what else is easy? Subscribing to my channel. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.